with Normandale Lutheran Church gathered together by the Spirit and virtually. I hope you all had a very heartfelt and meaningful Thanksgiving however you spent it. We want to say that we are grateful for you, for your presence in this community, and also to many of you who came through uh, the drive through on Wednesday and dropping off donations of food for CES, Community Emergency Services, our Food Shelf Partners in the Phillips neighborhood. It was so wonderful to see you and to hand you a piece of pumpkin pie. I hope we get to see each other in a safe and similar way soon. Um, today we embark into a new season, into Advent, so happy Advent you guys. Um, Keep a lookout for an Advent mail-in coming your way with the readings and themes and prayers for the season that you can use in your own home. A few opportunities that we don't want you to miss out on. Number one, decorate the tree. There is now a Christmas tree lit and waiting for you in the awning of the main entrance of Normandale. And you are invited to either make an ornament or just bring an ornament that represents your family to add to that tree. So you can have like a family, tr Normandale family tree there um, to represent us and to be together this Christmas. Make sure um, that you either have a photo on it or your family's name so we can see you clearly. We fill that tree with love for one another this Christmas. There will be a drive through uh, viewing of it on December 13th, so stay tuned for more information about that. We've got a porch sitting special event happening as well. Absolutely everybody, everybody is invited to join us. Uh, we'll have guests Rita Davern and Ramona Quito stately uh, as we watch a screening of their documentary, Stories I Didn't Know which is about Rita's family and Pike Island, which her family used to own, and her exploration of relationships and Dakota land and our shared history. So join us, that'll be December 9th at 4 p.m. Links will be on our website and also in the weekly mailings. The Center for Healing and Wholeness uh, has something for us in this time of social distancing. They're offering a new uplifting service uh, meeting folks right where they are by sending activity mailings and encouraging cards and letters, uh, phone visits and surprise gifts and more. So if you or someone you know would appreciate that engagement, just contact Cheryl Nielsen, uh, I'm sorry, Nicholson at the Center for Healing and Wholeness and more information for that on our website as well or call the church office. 
Finally, the National Lutheran Choir Christmas Festival is happening. It'll be happening virtually, so from the comfort of your own living room, we hope you will tune in. Um, again, held virtually this year, December 11th at 8 p.m. And free, can't beat that. There will be music for the healing of the world from all around the globe. Peace and joy that not even a pandemic can take away. We hope that you will consider joining us for all of these exciting opportunities. And yet amidst all that excitement, we also have sobering news. Um, deaths of our saints again this week. So we also share um, and ask that you surround with prayer and comfort Mark Rohde and his family uh, upon the death of his parents, both Clarence and Isabel. And also the family of June Pearson, as she quickly followed her husband Lloyd this week in death, and they are now reunited again. So thanks be to God for their lives, for their witness, and for the grace they now receive. Now wherever you are on your faith journey, and wherever you are this morning, however you come to this worship with us, we want you to know that you are welcome here. Lay down the burdens you've been carrying this week and settle in. We prepare our hearts together for worship. Beloved people of Normandale Lutheran Church, we gather together every week to worship, and we start off our worship services acknowledging the ways in which we have been called to service of others and in service of God, and in many ways we have succeeded, and in many ways we have fallen quite short. It's a time when we bring our sin forward, the ways that we have been disconnected from God and disconnected from others in our lives. It's an it's a even playing field. When we all bring together, we bring forward our sin. And so, now let us begin worship with a brief order of confession and forgiveness, acknowledging the ways in which we have fallen short and asking for the mercy and forgiveness of our loving God through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God with us, even in Advent, we confess that you can seem far away. You are hidden when we need you near. In our hurt, doubt, and fear, we do not try to draw closer to you. Instead, we place blame, we lose hope, we lash out against you, our neighbor, even those we love. Forgive us, we pray, and come save us. Let your face shine until our tears are dried, our sins are faded, and our hope is restored. After all, we belong to you, and in your hands we can be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved body of Christ, God created humans in God's own image and called us very good. God came to us through the messy process of birth with all of its blood, sweat, and tears. God rejoices at every person who wakes from their slumber to prepare for the coming of Christ. God welcomes all who turn from sin and toward holy living. God opens God's arms to all who work to embody faith. There is grace and forgiveness for all of our sins. And so, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I hereby pronounce to you forgiveness, full forgiveness of all your sins. Go, go forth, awake with the Holy Spirit, embodying your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing together now.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us together pray the prayer of the day. God of mystery, make yourself known. Come to us, abide with us, speak to us, that we might know your presence and live in hope through Jesus Christ, your revelation to us all. Amen. The Gospel reading for the first Sunday of Advent comes from Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Amen. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. A reading for today from Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles wood and, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known among your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has erred, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen a God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself from us, we transgressed. We have all become like one who's unclean now. And all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade now like a leaf in our iniquities, like the wind to take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or, or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us. You have delivered us into the hand of our own iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. <laughs> we are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry. O oh Lord, do not remember our iniquity forever. Now consider we are your people. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story that I heard recently. A story of a little boy named Randall and his dad and a big store. 
maybe you've got a similar story yourself. This one happened shortly after Thanksgiving. It was an exciting day. Randall's dad was taking him shopping for his family's Christmas presents. But you know, once they arrived, you guess what happens. At the store, the distractions and the toys were so enticing and the holiday lights all shining. It wasn't long until Randall wandered off into other aisles. <laughs> Following one display to the next, to the next and soon becoming lost, of course. Finally, he looks up from some of those toys for a moment and it's just then that the cold panic sweeps over him as he realizes with fright his dad is gone like gone gone and he's scared he ran this way and that Randall frantically searched amongst the dizzying aisles with growing fear and anger along the way you know, why had Randall's dad left him, huh? Wasn't he worried about him? And you know what's gonna happen to me now? Oh no! What do I do now? Little Randall didn't know that his dad was truly, truly concerned. In fact, he was already on a mission like Randall had never seen. With an eagle eye on those front doors, he'd already ruled out that Randall had not left the store, so he beelined it for the manager to ask for access to their surveillance camera room, see if he could get eyes on his son. And finally there, in fuzzy black and white images, he finally spotted his son, Randall, in aisle 15, sitting on the floor, biting his lip, wiping tears with his hands, surrounded by superhero figurines to try and protect him. With urgency, Randall's dad asked to borrow the intercom and spoke assuringly into the microphone, Randall, I see you. Surprise and relief flooded Randall's voice, face as he stood up straight up, not sure where to look, but recognizing his father's clear voice. Stay right where you are. I know you can't see me right now, but I see you, his dad said, and I'm coming to you. You're not alone, Randall. I'm coming to you. Our prayer from Isaiah today runs the gamut of emotions, high to low, and they remind me a lot of both what Randall might have experienced with his dad at the store, that range of emotions, and the journey of high hopes and terrifying experiences and the roller coaster of in-betweens that most of us have gotten accustomed to in 2020. At the start, Isaiah begins with a full-on love song to God. He is on cloud nine, reveling in victory toast level recountings of God's glorious acts done for Israel. Roaring cheers expected. But about halfway through, Isaiah turns on a dime. It's clear that those glorious acts are just a memory now. His praise becomes a sudden lament, a cry, both to and at God for abandoning them, for not being present in the same clear and spectacular way that they counted on before, ways that made life exciting and enjoyable, smooth and free, ways that made it a heck of a lot easier to give God praise. And then Isaiah ventures even one frantic step deeper into blaming God. You have hidden your face from us, verse 7 says, accusing God of turning and wandering away from Israel and not the other way around. Before at last, like a furious toddler throwing a dizzying tantrum, finally wearing himself down to an emotional heap on the floor, Isaiah at last concedes the truth, maybe even crying, 
Okay, it was us. <laughs> it was us. We got lost. But we couldn't find you anymore. Have you seen what we're going through here? We're so lost, Isaiah says. Even the good things we do feel no good without you. Now we're like leaves in the, the wind, dried up, blown around, falling apart. We cry out, Father, we are yours. Clay in your hands. Don't abandon us. Where are you? Where are you and how long, O oh Lord, must we wait? Now, beginning Advent, we too cry out. How long, O oh Lord? How long must we wait for your presence to feel close and real and glorious again till we see your hidden face? And is it any mystery that being distanced from everything else that we love can make us feel so distanced from you, God, too? How long, O oh Lord, until we can celebrate worship together on Sunday mornings? How long until we can visit with family and travel and hold normal meetings and go to live sports and music and school events and receive a simple hug or I'd even settle for a handshake at this point? How long we cry out until we no longer spend holidays alone? Till our medical professionals can get a handle on this tidal wave and we can get our heads and hearts around the death, the loss, the long-lasting conditions and the grief sweeping our country and our world. And while we're at it, <laughs> how long until we aren't split along self-interested political seams of self-interest? right? Until we can live in not just some shallow semblance of peace in our communities, but in communities of hard-won mutual trust. And not just for some of us, but across every socio-economic, cultural, and racial divide. How long until that? How long, O oh Lord, till we have a sense of safety and normalcy again, and a way of living that feels sustainable. God, have you turned your back on us? Have you turned your face from us? Do you hear us cry? Are we abandoned? Can you see us even when we can't see you? And are you on your way? Or in some of our circumstances, do we, like Isaiah at first, have it a little backwards? We're sitting back blaming and waiting for you, oh God, while you are actively leaning in waiting for us. Are we sometimes clay in your hands, resisting molding as the world prepares for your great coming? What a place to start an Advent journey, right? Waiting, longing, and technically according to our Christian liturgical calendar, the year starts with Advent now. So it's New Year's. Happy New Year's, everybody! Happy, uh, welcome to, uh, this. <laughs> Reality. To the loneliness, the fear, the grief, that are real and also so true to the Advent experience. Waiting for God to act. Waiting for God to personally come near to us again. And perhaps realizing our own need to be remade even as we wait and cry out. Isaiah 64 closes with an impassioned appeal to God for to look favorably on Israel again and to remember that they are God's own people. But I'm inclined to believe that this weight that Israel experiences and goes through, it has far less 
to do with God remembering than it did the people remembering. Remembering that God is a caring and concerned parent. That if they wander into danger, God hopes against all hope that they will turn and come safely home again. And when something terrible happens, God hopes that they will cry out to their father, mother, creator to come near. The experience of absence and waiting is our Advent starting place. But we get to remember that that's not even close to where God's starting point of faithfulness and nearness and presence with us begins. Even when we can't see it plainly, that has always been God's through line. And if we listen, to the words on scriptural loudspeaker during Advent, we know that God sees us, even now. Even when we struggle to see God's presence plainly, God sees us. God is coming to us. In reality, God never walked away. So in Advent, we do cry out, how long? For the sake of ourselves and our neighbors, we cry out. We cry out in pain of absence that is so intimately real to us this year. We cry out for all the things that ache in us, that worry us, as we too find ourselves lost, sitting in a heap on the floor seemingly alone in our very own self-made aisle 15. And it's okay to cry out. Because God hears us. And because crying out itself is a sneaky Trojan horse-like thing that looks and feels like protest and pain, but eventually also reveals this hidden, little, cautious gem called hope. We cry out, but we also take heart. Because we know that God will tear open the heavens to be with us. And the words that Mark's gospel leaves us with this morning, stay awake, is the whole task of Advent. To stay awake as we wait for it. So that as we cry out, how long, O Lord, our ears might still perk up and we might not miss the assuring sound of God's voice coming from unexpected directions, telling us clearly I see you. I see you. Even if it's difficult to see me right now, I see you. And I'm coming to you. Friends, you are not alone with your cries. Amen. Thank you.
Dear people of Normandale, as we enter, have, we've now entered into the season of Advent, a, a time of year that is historically marked by increased generosity to our neighbors, to our friends, to our families, and to our churches. We are in a bizarre time of pandemic when, uh, when doing things like service it has become much more difficult. And serving those who we historically have served at the Christmas season is increasingly difficult. We have been astounded through the last many months at your generosity as a congregation, the ways that you have shown up to help those in need since the beginning of, of the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you for your generosity. This year, we're looking at a Christmas season unlike any we've seen in our, uh, in our collective memories. Um, historically at Normandale, we sponsor families from the Normandale Housing Ministry, one of our partners uh, that we've been involved with heavily since its inception, and SAFSM, the Sub-Saharan African Youth and Family Services of Minnesota, two of our long-standing partners. We've historically sponsored families with Christmas gifts uh, at this time of year, and because of the, the pandemic, um, we're unfortunately only going to be able to do that online. And what we've been hearing from our partners as we've asked, how can we be the most helpful to you? Uh, what we've been hearing is that actually this year, uh, money, cash gifts is, is going to go a lot further. So what we're looking to do is to, to together, organize together to get uh, $50 prepaid visa cards for uh, the 86 Normandale housing individuals and for the 30 plus SAFSM families and presenting them in, in holiday baskets um, at the Christmas season. So for the next two weeks, we're asking for your help. We need to mobilize to make this happen. You can go online to normluth.org slash give and go to the giving page and there are uh, sort of drop down menus that you can choose. And if you choose the joy of giving fund and, uh, and sponsor a family $50 uh, or more, uh, to, to get these prepaid visa cards. Your generosity is so much more important now than ever. And so thank you so much. Thank you so much for your generosity, not only of your finances, but of your spirit and the ways in which you have been uh, serving others and reaching out and loving each other. It is truly, truly astonishing and heart, uh, it's heartening to see and hear the stories of how you're looking out for your neighbors and looking out for one another. So thank you. And with that, I would like for you just to take a moment to breathe as you consider uh, your generosity and your giving this, this Christmas season. And imagine those for whom you usually worship with. If you're new to this community, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We can't wait to sit in the pews with you. But take a moment to reach out to one another, uh, reach out to one another to share a sign of God's peace. Whether that's uh, in the in the messages below in, on YouTube or on Facebook, or a text message or an email or a phone call when worship is is done, uh, reach out and offer a, a sign of peace to those who come to mind that God has put on your hearts. So the peace of the Lord be with you all. Thanks be to God.
Together let us pray the prayer of good courage. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, rejoice, be We are